Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Bolzy B2. It was made from 1949 to 1956. It's a 35mm film rangefinder. Has a Wallensack Anastigmat 44mm lens. Goes from f32 to f22. It's sitting in a Wallensack synchromatic shutter goes from a tenth of a second to a two hundredth of a second plus time and bulb. It's a press type shutter. Uh, you don't need to recock it. And maybe because of that, uh, Jacques Bolzi designed in this double exposure prevention and he uses the sprockets, the same ones that run the film counter in most cameras, uh, to retract this pin that holds the shutter down. So you have to lift slightly on the winder and then it pulls that guy back in so that the shutter uh, lever can come up all the way to the top and then you're ready to go. One thing if you're just listening for the shutter the first click is the double exposure prevention pin popping out and then that's the actual shutter sound. It's an ingenious, if, if uh, somewhat frustrating uh, design. It's kind of cool. It's defeatable by using uh, a cable release or just manually pushing that pin in yourself. So it is still possible to do uh, double exposures. If I had working film in there, that would have just been another exposure. Because it uh, uses the film winding the sprocket in there, you either have to have film in it, I've got a dummy roll in here, or you have to have the back off and turn the cogs yourself to test it out. Inside, it's really well made. And let me get this bogus film out of here. It's got a roller bearing on the feed side. It doesn't just rely on smooth metal or plastic. And it's got this strange clip, a little bit like an old Leica clip on the take-up spool. This take-up spool doesn't come out though, so it can be a little bit fiddly. Because you have to hold this in place, lift up on the spring clip, and slide the film leader under it. So it can feel like a three-handed operation. Um, as long as I've got it off, the uh, back, the top plate, and the body are three separate pieces of cast aluminum. So it's a sturdy little sucker. Because it's aluminum, it's not too heavy, but it's got, you know, some oomph to it. This one is in pretty good shape. The shutter seems to be in good shape. The aperture's working. Like a lot of them, I'm missing the cool red bolsey emblem on top. And I misplaced the little tripod thing that attaches the case solidly to the camera. It has a helicoid focus, which has a solid tube that's thread, threaded, moves in and out. So it's actually a more robust design in that respect than the uh, Signet 35 that I repaired. It has a cool depth of field calculator on the back here. Um, I haven't really played with it that much, but you dial in your f-stop and then it's got these curved lines showing your near and far distances. So it's the same kind of marking on later SLR lenses. Pretty cool. Um, while I was using it, something fell off in the rangefinder. So the last few frames I had to do is zone focusing, but the marks up here seem to be pretty accurate because they came out nice and sharp. First I thought I had really bad luck because the mirror that fell off of the coronet and uh, the winder jamming on the Leica M3, then the rangefinder here, but I don't think it's luck. I mean, most of the cameras I get, they've been shelf queens for a while. They've just been sitting there and I'm working all the working bits throwing them in a bag, throwing them in the car, they're getting moved around, they're getting used. So if something's going to break or fall off, it's going to be the 
you know, while they're being used for the first time in 30, 40, 50 years. So I just need to, you know, relax and realize these suckers are going to break depending on how old and how well cared for they are. I got some nice shots. I was using uh, the Arista EDU Ultra, which is really Fomapan 100. It seems a little bit fussy, but it's nice film and it's really in inexpensive. Uh, it worked out using uh, HC110 uh, that this film and the high contrast black and white that I shot as the second roll in the uh, Ryko, Ryko XR2S, the time came out to the same. So I souped them at the same time and it was a little bit weird because the high contrast Kodak film had white marks on the negative which showed up as black uh, on the scans after I inverted them um, and they're coming off the sprocket holes and the Arista has the opposite it's got black on the negatives so it's showing up as white on the inverted scans so I'm still trying to figure out what I did wrong there I guess uh, I probably shouldn't mix such amazingly different film types in the same soup. Uh, I am going to try and refix uh, the ones I shot in here. Anyway, um, I do really like this camera. I mean, the thing is tiny but beefy. It's accurate. It's got a pretty slow, fastest shutter speed, but it's not bad. Just, you know, don't shoot really fast film in it. So I am going to see if I can fix the rangefinder problem this guy, I'll run some color film through it and I'll see you then.